Hello everyone, welcome to Educanting. Today we have with us Vishal Dev and Vishal is joining with us from London. And today's session is mainly for the, is mainly for the students from Assam and all the mathematics lovers. So let's jump into the session. So firstly, Vishal, welcome to our show. Yeah, uh, thank you, Shubhajit, for inviting me. It's uh, wonderful. Yeah, and and this is great work you are doing. So so yeah, thanks 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 a lot for inviting. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Yeah. Okay. So to start the conversation, like, first, can you please give a overview of your career, so your career journey, starting from Dick Boy to right now you're in University College of London. So your journey, right. just share your journey with us. Right. Uh, so I grew up in uh, a town. Uh, called Dig Boy in uh, Assam, and those of you who maybe you know your geography is strong, you may know that Dig Boy was the first place where oil was found, and was one of the only oil refineries uh, uh, for a very long time in India. So, I come from Dig Boy, and I grew up there, and went to school there in. Uh, till like class 10 and then 11 and 12 i moved to a, another nearby much bigger town Dibrugar. and uh, so i was i did my 11 and 12 in Dibrugar, and then after that i wrote uh, uh, entrances and got uh, into chennai mathematical institute went in 20, 2014 and from 2014 to 17 i did my bachelor's in masters uh, in mathematics and computer science then I joined my uh, master's in computer science at CMI in 2017. And then after finishing my first year of master's at uh, CMI, I got an opportunity to, uh, I so I left CMI and there was an M2 program in uh, University uh, Paris East. And so I went to Paris and there was a second year of master's program there. And I did got a second year of master's degree at uh, University of Paris East. Uh, so that was 2018-19 academic year. And then after that, I moved to London and currently I am doing a PhD in, at Department of Mathematics at University College London. I started in 2019 and I hope to graduate in uh, 2023. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we learned about that, you, Monish, or we heard about you. That uh, Now I want to know about like in, when you are preparing, when I met making that going sort of magazine all this and you know that you also observe that in school going students there is a fear about maths like and what do you think how to avoid that how to clear that fear so this this is a you know this is a serious question and you know this will take a lot of work and effort it's it's a it's a it's a question it's a question that is worldwide it affects different cultures and communities but it dif affects different cultures and communities in different like at different levels i rem so somebody i knew uh, had done a statistical survey on this in his in tinsukia district in assam and saw that the way this fear of mathematics affects uh, like affects boys and girls in school is different so for girls it's a lot more and 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 so this is a very serious question and this will take a lot of like i i don't think i have the full correct answer i can only give you my thoughts on the matter um so why do we fear mathematics well i i don't know right like different it's the answer is different for different communities. You know, typically those who are good at mathematics belong from certain places, belong from certain areas, belong from a certain privilege level, belong from, you know, going deep into it, you have to see that, the, you have to see what kind of, now the question of representation within academia, within, you know, those who are doing good jobs after getting math degrees, what kind of representation is there and and you know you will see that a lot of them are men uh in internationally speaking white men from from good uh social backgrounds and and you know who have had a very good upbringing and and are probably you know rich and had a lot of facilities growing up so it's a it's a very difficult question and and how do you work to 
break this and and somebody i had interviewed uh, i was part of uh, uh, for gonitsora uh, rubul mouth who's a sci scientist at uh, i think currently he's at harvard university so he said that you know this will take a lot of effort it, it will take uh science maths activism to come together to solve this uh issue i have no one answer i mean you know for so for example for a lot of girls right from childhood they are fed the idea that mathematics is only for boys and and girls cannot do mathematics so that a lot of them are fed this idea right from childhood and and maybe the level to this uh, to which this acts is different whether you are in a city and you have uh, you have a very good school near you or you are having to walk very far to go to school in a rural village there's a difference and and so it's it's hard i mean you know it, and it's you know a lot of okay there are i mean it's it won't be sufficient to just open doors and universities and colleges and say that we will take more students from underprivileged communities and so on one has to go out and get them and uh, create you know sort of create make efforts in getting resources there and make it accessible so it's a difficult question and and for different communities and how it plays out and and so it would require careful study and effort for many years and and decades probably i i don't have any correct answer so you tell me you have been you know involved with you know a lot you have been putting in a lot of effort right what 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 do you think might be the reason and how do you think like what is your answer to this question my my view point is like uh, we like what we did like if the mentality of the student need to be changed like learning the bicycle we in first attempt we will fail and in second attempt we when we are failing we are uh, falling from the cycle and then we are again trying to ride that cycle and learning to that but in our case in maths in all these the student used to do like when they are first attempt they are not getting that math they, they the a fear a fear is creating on their mind now when the fear is creating they are starting not practicing that thing and slightly slowly they are going far from that subject we have to avoid that but in that case with the other students the students and also the teachers who are in the school they also put some effort they also need to put some effort and for that also they should have the information and when i used to talk with the teachers they don't know about the exam like olympiad national talent set the book like indian today mathematics today they don't know so we we also have to educate that teachers who are teaching the students that is also a good point so you have raised some very interesting points right the idea is you have to create a supportive environment right, right. where you know students can flourish and to create that supportive environment it will it will be very important to train the teachers so that you know because so that teachers can also if teachers are supported they will be able to support the students right if the right. teachers have the information they can provide that information to the students and you know have a supportive env environment where the students are encouraged that it is okay to not be able to try and solve this at your first attempt but then don't give up try it continue and and you know often in this happens right students are told oh you just can't do it and then you know it's like the gate is shut right at their face when they are when such comments are made day in and day out and and said that oh you just can't do this uh, maybe you should not do it yeah. so yeah. that that is you know have creating that environment where the teachers get the right support and are trained in a way so that they can help out the students is is very important and that is why teachers themselves you know so so and so this is and this this just goes on right now where are teachers trained in colleges and then so they have themselves have to be when they were students they have to be supported yeah. by students and then and then this keeps going on and on and there's a cycle which is created and it's hard to break into it and 
you know, resolve these issues because it just has been going on for so long. Right, right. I completely agree with you. So now, now I have some interesting question for you. Like, first of all, I want to know from you, like the exams you have mentioned in your website. That is very interesting to me. So I want to that you please elaborate on that. Put some light on that. Huh. So, okay. So, yeah, I mean, if somebody has been to my website, you will see that uh, uh, there are a few axioms which I have mentioned. So they are by uh, mathematician uh, Federico Ardila. And so Federico Ardila, he is a professor of mathematics at uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, okay, you, you should check this. Uh, I, I may not be very correct uh, about this. But so I think, so San Francisco State University and also a joint professor at, uh, 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 I think you, uh, in Bogota and in, in Colombia, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, so so he, he uh, grew up in Colombia and then moved to the United States for his uh, higher studies and then he has been in the united states and he's a very good researcher and uh mathematician and and so he works at san francisco state university and and so he's also you know being in the us he's also trying to contribute to underprivileged communities in san francisco and also colombia and and he has done several uh he has been putting in a lot of effort in trying to bridge the gap uh, between and trying to make, get underprivileged students to try and put an effort so that they can access higher education of very good quality. So he wrote this article uh, sometime ago a few uh, some years ago so it's called todos cuentan i i, I don't know I, I don't know any spanish by the way uh, but it's called todos cuentan uh, i think it means everybody counts so he uh, it's a notices of i think it's notices of the american mathematical society if i'm not wrong uh, but maybe i will check and share the link with you so that you can share it uh, and there he mentions about this joint so he started so this was many years before zoom so like i think early, like late 2000s like around 2010 or something so he at that time was doing online classes between students in colombia and uh, students in san francisco and created a joint effort where students can have a shared experience learn ma good mathematics learn from each other in their classroom and not just within the same city but students in a different country and shared that experience and and he writes about it and how uh and then what came out of that and what happened and a lot of those students have gone on to become professors and researchers in mathematics a lot of them are school teachers and a lot of them ha are contributing to the society by and there he mentions that you know mathematics is a tool that you can use to shape the community not everybody you know, needs to become a researcher, you know, doing mathematics does not mean just doing research and you can contribute to the community in various different ways. If you have learned mathematics and you're a school teacher, you are building, you know, you're building students of the next generation. You're so if you feel supported when you were a student, you can go and support continuing from the conversation that we just had. So there are these ax axioms that he mentioned in this article, and it's very interesting. He says that, you know, you don't know how talent is distributed, right? It's not like talent just comes from a rich family or people have to be at the right places at the right time to be supported, even if they are very talented. I, you know, they have to find the right support at the right time to be able to go ahead in their career. And that is something very important and often ignored when when people talk about talent and the idea of being a genius and so on. Yeah, I mean, there are prodigies who, you know, right from a very early childhood show a lot of intelligence, but most people and most people who are contributing to research scientists, let's say, are not prodigies. And, you know, they, happen to find the right support at the right time and that is very important and you know somebody like ramanujan he got support and then he could you know and then 
he got the right people who supported him and then he could you know do things which for centuries will amaze us so it's it's very important to get that i mean you know it's not so why is it that only i mean and then to get that support there one has to put in effort and it takes a lot of work by a lot of people to get the right support at the uh, 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 there so that you can help them at the right time you know i have been at the right place at the right time around the right people of course i have worked hard most people you know are willing to work hard but then getting the right support at the right time that is really really important and and i have been you know supported by a lot of people so far and 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 that is you know recognizing that is very important so uh, yeah i mean the axioms i feel you know say that what is really important is getting the right support so that they can flourish you know talent is it's not like talent is only distributed in a certain city or a certain state or a certain country no it it's spread out and 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 you know how do you grow with that talent that requires support that requires an environment where you can grow and you know and and now when if you see a lot of people a lot of scientists i okay i, I i'm just making this claim i do not have correct data at this moment to support myself but what i see is a lot of them are from they have grown up in cities they have had facilities around them they could then build up on those facilities and then get to opportunities and they had the supportive environment and it that's, that has to change and and you know support has to be provided so you know so what you are doing is a tremendous task <laughs> Thank you. This is the your the your insight is very helpful and very insightful that your talks here. Yeah. So now now I want to know that you have experience you have experienced different types of education policy from starting from Assam then India then and then sorry Assam and India in one country and then then Paris then in UK. So from that point of view, suppose you have that opportunity, suppose for one day you got the opportunity to make education policy of India and as well as the state like Assam and all this. So what do you do? What are the you changes know, I, you would love to make? You know, th this is a difficult question. And, and what I would like to say is, you know, that there is no magic answer. Uh, and education policy would require a lot of effort and a lot of study and introspection. So here, the thing that I see, uh, I'm sure that is there, it's just that I haven't looked into those studies. But here, there are people who are looking at, uh, at how education policies are working and doing a lot of, putting in a lot of work into seeing how the current policy is, what are its faults, how it needs to be improved. And so, I think I will I will not give one answer that you know this needs to change or that needs to change because saying that from where I am is very easy and you know but this is some a serious thing and yeah. and changes in education policy are not reflected in a span of a few years. Yeah. This is something that takes maybe a few decades to show. So effort has to be put in for a longer period of time. It's not like building a road that you can see the changes in a certain in a few years yeah. education so you know when you are making changes to school education you will only see how what is contributed by that how it is affected maybe 20 30 years later once the students have grown up and have started contributing to the society and what changes have come from students who were comparing that with students who were in the previous education policy right so changes in education I, I i i honestly i mean i can tell you about you know what differences i have seen in education yeah. policy mm -hmm. i mean education how education works in india and in france and and in the uk and, and but then making 
statement of i think i i will not do that yeah so so if you if i want to know about that like that what is the difference you observe like what are the good point in indian what are, what can be a takeaway from UA, uk or france if i want to know about that i mean uh, i do not know much about school education i'm seeing a bit of higher education yeah. here right mm -hmm. so higher education specifically in mathematics how how it works here so uh, the french system it works quite differently and and there are entrances like in so in uk you don't have like entrances i think oxford and cambridge have something like an entrance exam but not exactly and and it is based on largely on your grades in school and uh, and the classes in so so in so in india uh, specialized institutes like cmi isi the undergraduate classes are small they are very selective and the model of education there uh, at least in cm and I, I think i have heard people talk about is is in, inspired from the french model where in institutes like ecole normale superior or ecole polytechnique there is a small selective group of people who are selected every year and there are very difficult tests and they have to write in order to get to those institutes uh, the model of education here i i think is by the way i am no expert on this so you know please uh, i mean anybody listening to this please if you think that what i'm saying is wrong feel free to point it out uh, the model of education from how i see it in in uk it's it's different so i'm in my university at university college london the uh, class sizes are like 200 students and 400 students so it's it's a large really large class uh, even at oxford and cambridge i think the class sizes are maybe not as large but it, they are quite large compared to uh, what i think are the class sizes in uh, equal normal superior the num so one the number of okay so one thing i want to mention the number of mathematicians i was shocked when i first went to paris and saw the number of mathematicians in that city it's huge it's enormous like departments there have like maybe some departments in some universities in paris have close to 200 mathematicians working there and there are multiple universities so it's just very difficult to imagine the amount of resources they have uh, and so once you have so many professors so many postdocs so many phd students i think i'm not sure 200 only professors or 200 like including postdoc phd students but and this is just maybe and there are like several many universities in paris so it's just enormous now there the class sizes are maybe a few hundred students and then they have a lot of electives and and so the resources that they have as in the resource people that they have they can i don't think such large departments exist in like few other countries so and this is true for other french universities outside of paris as well not everywhere i don't know if it's true everywhere but some departments are huge and i don't know if that's there in uh, very few other places in the world really and so when you have so many people you have human resources who can train the next generation really well so you have a class that is really huge so okay i mean i'm not talking about uh, equal normal superior or equal polytechnic i'm not, i'm not sure again yeah please i am not very sure about how this works but i think in the other parisian universities you have very large classes and then maybe towards when they after their first or second years they can take specialized courses and the number of optional courses that they have is really high that is true here uh, in the uk as well because there are so many mathematicians here in the department that there are so many different choices so students can actually explore a range of different things so that is something very different and it's because of the presence of these human resources here so many scientists are here that they can offer various different courses and students can try out before you know getting to decide what they want to do next uh, so there's this, this option um, I don't know how things work in IITs. 
I think class sizes are quite big in IITs as well, right? Yeah, if you, if you uh, go in IIT, in IIT, the class size for that BTEC student is very big. But for if you go by the for general sense, it is like around 40, 50 people. Right. Oh. Yeah, now, so this is one of the observations I made. Sorry, yeah, yeah. go on. Yeah. You are a student of Diver Academy and you are learning uh, uh, Hindustani classicals. So, and we saw that uh, the math and music, there is a good bonding between these two. What is your view on that? Huh. So, so this is interesting, right? So a lot of mathematicians are interested in music and quite often, like in India, classical music and, and you know, music that requires quite a bit of training, quite a bit of understanding, uh, you know, it takes a while before you start understanding it and so i so i was you know I, I mean my parents sent me to a tabla class and i learned tabla growing up and then when i went to cmi the like so many people were interested in classical music both hindustani and carnatic so and and other forms of music as well so this was really interesting uh, so one of uh, uh, i mean in fact the founder of cmi cs seshadri professor seshadri he himself uh was learned in carnatic music and uh and there were concerts which were happening in cmi quite frequently so very big artists would be musicians would be invited and they would perform and uh and so i got to witness that and and talking to my friends a lot of them were interested in music so i developed uh i mean i had learned tabla and that training also helped me in appreciating Hindustani classical and uh, a bit of Carnatic classical as well. And so, and then I, and then throughout those years at in Chennai, I went to a few, uh, several concerts which are happening outside of CMI as well. And then slowly started developing some taste and listened to classical music for very long. And then I felt like, okay, maybe I want to learn a bit as well. And so after coming to London, I mean, there was this online course, which was uh, advertised. So my uh, teacher is uh, uh, Indrani Mukherjee and, and she is uh, she is a wonderful teacher and wonderful guru. It's amazing learning from her. And so she's based in Kolkata and I take classes and it also works quite well because it it might be hard to travel and uh also staying abroad although in london i mean there are opportunities but still so it works out really well for me and even here a lot of my friends are into music and they are uh, uh, some of them are you know they have learned music quite a bit and play several instruments or sing uh I know some professors who can, I, there's this professor who, uh, who I know uh, and, and he uh, is in Vienna and he plays uh, piano, he plays the organ, which is a, I think a very di a difficult instrument because you are using both your hands and also your feet and you need an assistant to help you along with that. And, and you know, so, yeah, I mean, this is, I, I this is uh, yeah so this is curious uh, right a lot of mathematicians are interested in music uh, so yeah I wonder why <laughs> yeah a study should be needed on that also <laughs> yeah also yeah I mean when I was actually in school uh, I was learning tabla and also around that time I was uh, starting to read up on Olympiad math and so I was reading about uh, congruency is modular or certain number and like i saw, saw those concepts being used in tabla and rhythmic patterns and so on okay. right because in indian music uh, especially rhythm there's a lot of mathematics and and so you are solving essentially equations of the form 3x plus uh, 3x is congruent to one mod 16 often and and so <laughs> there is there is there is interesting mathematics there i mean maybe not mathematics of the you know uh what is of you know research mathematicians would be doing but nevertheless for a high school student that was very interesting seeing that okay there are these things which uh, people who play tabla 
are very familiar with and now i'm seeing them in a textbook when i'm reading those things so so now now to wrap this session it is a very interesting lines to talk when now to wrap this session anything from your side to add for the students who love mathematics and one more thing i want to listen i want to hear from you that uh, that you also mentioned in earlier that that uh, the mental stress and we saw that in the maximum premium the suicide rate of the premier institute is higher so on that note and anything extra to add from your side for the all the students um yeah i think so this is an important thing you mentioned and this is certainly an issue and this has to be you know looked at very seriously and carefully by in premier institutes why this is happening there's a lot of stress yeah. and i think you know res good resource people and mental health experts should be brought in so that they can you know talk to so i mean i feel that is one one difference that i see coming to the uk there's a lot more conversation com certainly compared to places i've been before i mean I, I i feel i may be wrong i feel the conversation about mental health and the importance of taking care of yourself is much higher in my department here and we are sent emails and resources frequently you know oh maybe you should these are there's a holiday coming and these are things you can do and not everybody may like a holiday so maybe you can do some other things and if you feel you are struggling please do talk to us you know they are actively trying to reach out there's a conversation going on the first thing you know the first step in trying to solve an issue is trying to understand what the issue and starting a conversation about it so, so i feel that the conversation is ongoing here uh, and so that is very important uh, i i certainly feel that lot lot more resources i am sent resources and this takes resources and this takes understanding uh, and so i am sent resources and i feel supported here and and there's this conversation going on and, and i uh, in my opinion that's more than what i have seen before uh, yeah so so to uh, you know so to, to those who love mathematics you know keep keep the love going on keep, this is craze right uh, so those who love mathematics might often be crazy about mathematics it's very important to you know to maintain that and in in a longer term uh so so for example one of the things which the head of the department uh, tweeted uh, on twitter a while ago in in my department was that uh, she advised uh early career do you know phd students and those in early career mathematicians to take the weekend off don't work on weekends take time off you need time to relax and she you know if that comes from the head of the the department and if she is telling us take time off to relax that that is a wonderful message that is being sent out that it is important to relax and your body your mind needs rest so if that message is coming off from somebody so senior in the department i think that is really nice so she and then she says that you know i have been taking time off and my career has been fine so and if she is you know the head of the department at the university such as ucl you know and she is saying this that really means a lot right so it's if you love mathematics and uh, you know you may be at different stages remember it's if you want to pursue mathematics for the rest of your life it's it's you need to take care uh, of yourself and it's as i previously mentioned it's it's a marathon it's not a one day sprint it's not one entrance exam that you write and then you qualify that love has to keep going and 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 you know th there are uh well i i don't know i mean i'm still learning right i'm still uh i i don't know if i have the uh, if i can sort of authoritatively say what you should do and what you should not be doing so take my whatever i'm saying with a pinch of salt but yeah i mean you know if you enjoy it keep enjoying keep exploring and just keep talking to a lot of interesting people a lot of the times i mean uh, one might be in some kind of isolation because you you may feel that you may not have 
uh, others to share the mathematics that you're learning and so talk to people try making connections these days you know you can talk to people online and 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 there are many different things you can do so you know just keep enjoying and and in order to be able to you know continue enjoying what you do also take rest yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great. It was a very, very insightful talk and um, good luck for your further career and it was very insightful. I, I think it should be very helpful and a very, not a boring lecture, it should be a very interesting and very insightful for the students, for all the students, not only for maths, for all the students. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. This, this has been an interesting conversation. Thank you for inviting me.